Today I fucked up by having a sexual dream about Voldemort. This happened last night slash early this morning. So before we get to the hook, let me start by saying, my girlfriend and I have recently completed a full start to finish Harry Potter marathon, and during the lockdown I've been having some really weird ass dreams. So regarding the Harry Potter marathon, I was a big fan of the books as a kid but had never really got into the films. I'd seen the first two but never really bothered after that. When we finished the marathon, we were both in agreement that Voldemort isn't the impressive mastermind villain that I remembered from my childhood. If anything he came off as quite comical. Constantly getting beaten by teenagers, super over exaggerated wand movements, some downright hilarious facial expressions. And when he hugged Malfoy in the last film it was game over. All fear factor withered. This was not the terrifying dude I remembered reading about. That is, until last night. I was tied to a wooden board with my arms and legs stretched out and bolted down, like someone was going to use me as a target. Voldemort entered the room in a dark robe, and slowly walked towards me. His robe dropped to the floor and he was wearing nothing but a snakeskin thong. He started licking from my chest upwards running his long slimy tongue up my chin, across my face and finishing on my forehead. I woke up screaming like a little girl. By the time my eyes focused my hand was bouncing off the side of my girlfriend's head. I had just punched my girlfriend in the side of the head. She was not happy. I spared her the details until the morning, luckily she was not hurt only startled, and knows I'm prone to sleepwalking. Once she heard the full story she decided I can make it up to her by posting the full details of my sexual Voldemort dream online for internet strangers. And I have to describe it as a sexual dream not a terrifying nightmare. TLDR, watched my favorite childhood stories during lockdown, had a sexual dream about Voldemort, woke up and punched my girlfriend in the head. You're a bottom, Harry. He who shall not be named, say it. No, please, I don't want to. He who shall not be named, say it. Repeat what I told you. Cries I've been a bad wizard Mr. Voldemort. He who shall not be named, yes. Yes you have. He was wearing nothing but a snakeskin thong. What ha 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 sorry op, but this part just made me burst out laughing. Your subconscious was doing some serious mental gymnastics at this point. There's a joke in here somewhere about puzzle tongues and snakes, but I'm too tired to work it out. That was no dream boy, I'll see you again real soon. The heart wants what the heart wants. Guess you gotta chop off your GF's nose now. Today I fucked up by blowing my hand up. Too long didn't read, got too cocky firing a grenade launcher, shot myself in the hand. Obligatory this didn't happen today, but about two years ago. I was in the army and designated as one of my unit's grenadiers. Regardless of role, every six months, you're expected to attend a training session to make sure you're still proficient with your weapon. This was my second time firing the relatively new M320 which replaced the older underslung M203. Both fired the same round and both essentially operated the same way. Because this was a training environment we were only using inert cheetah rounds named because of their orange powdery explosion upon impact. Despite the inert, these things will still mess you up. Despite this, I thought it best to not wear gloves. I grabbed my dozen or so rounds and head to my lane. The first four rounds are R0 to make sure we understand how this thing works. Every time I pull the trigger, a cloud of orange powder erupts right where it should. I feel like hot shit, and round one of the first qualification table is ready. I post up behind my little knee-high wall, take aim, and fire. Immediately I feel a searing pain in my left hand, the hand holding the foregrip on the weapon. I figure I probably slipped and probably hit it on the wall ahead of me. I look down to check it out and all appeared normal and rest the now cleared weapon against the wall before I try and see where my round had hit, but I didn't see any powder from my lane. I looked down again and notice that, for some reason, I'm absolutely covered in orange powder. Before my eyes, my left middle and ring fingers flay open before my very eyes and then it hits me. I fucked up. 
Before I had another thought the medic on duty was hustling me over to the Humvee designated for idiots like me. In what feels like seconds my hand turned into a bloody mess. I was still fully coherent thanks to adrenaline and whatever else. Because it was my buddy as the designated medic, I asked him how bad this was. He might need to amputate. Fucking awesome. Dot. We arrived to the base hospital and my commander and the chaplain somehow beat us there. Because they're sick fucks, everyone wants to see. My boss takes some pictures and suddenly my hand is probably in tons of what not to do presentations. I had a fractured joint in my left ring finger, two pretty major lacerations along my middle and ring fingers, some scorched flesh, minor burn damage, and some lasting arthritis. Worst of all, orange powder essentially tattooed into my skin from impact. I get to keep all my fingers. Edit, exactly where I went wrong I still don't know. But what I think happened is that I braced my hand atop the wall I was firing behind, effectively putting my hand right in front of the barrel. Photo edit, since you guys asked, here's the picture that's probably floating around safety briefs everywhere. Viewer discretion advised. This was around an hour after initial fuck up. Bleeding had for the most part stopped and scorched flesh had been trimmed away. You can see the fucking orange powder, only a little bit still remains. But it kind of glows, which is fun. Apparently Apparently if I hit it anywhere higher up on my finger, amputation would have been a serious consideration. Edit edit edit, wow, top of the hot page and first gold. Thank you whoever you are. Do think about all the powerpoint you caused. Since death by powerpoint isn't a thing for me anymore, I love to think about it. So if I'm understanding this, yeah I was confused on this too. You're so lucky dude, glad you get to keep all your fingers. So am I. I have pretty high luck to balance out my low intelligence stat. I don't get it. You still never explained how the round impacted your hand. I'm still lost after reading this several times. Today I fucked up by bringing my son a glass of water. Woke up to my son asking for some water. Got up, was even sleepier than normal started walking towards his room. Managed to hit a door frame so hard that I'm currently in the hospital getting my left big toenail reattached. Apparently you can kick something so hard that parts of your body detach. Hurts like a motherfucker. 010, would not recommend. To add insult to injury, kid was already asleep again when I finally got to him with his glass of water, leaving a trail of blood through the hallway kitchen and his room. Helpful bot informed me my post was too short so I'd like to add a praise for local anesthetics, that's the shit. They did some nasty looking shit and I felt nothing. It's a weird feeling seeing them work on your toe and feel nothing. Too long didn't read, kicked a door so hard that parts of my body came off. Door is okay. Edit, since this questions comes up a lot, they did not reattach the nail hoping that it would continue to grow. The old nail is used to protect the nail bed and some other benefits. See for example here, the nail is raised by using scissors or a delicate spatula starting under the free edge of the nail. It is carefully detached from the nail bed and, if necessary, the nail is removed from the nail fold by rotational movements. 5. The nail will be preserved and replaced like a biological dressing. This has different functions, to shape to the nail bed fragments, to avoid adhesion between the roof and the nail bed, to support a possible associated fracture, like a splint, to decrease postoperative pain, and to improve tactile sensation during the healing period. Before replacing the nail, a few holes should be made to allow blood drainage. The nail should be firmly fixed at the end of the operation. Sounds like you nailed it. Since when do they reattach a toe nail? Doesn't that shit grow back on its own? No idea, thankfully this was my first time. Hopefully also the last. Maybe depending on how far in it's separated. They made too small incision to create a flap, pushed the nail in and made some stitches to close it. 10 tenths for parenting. He might have learned some not entirely age appropriate words. Door is okay. Nice. Parent of the year contender right here. Literally dismembered yourself, but still got the water to the child before tending to your injury. And that ungrateful little shit was sound asleep again.